calorie is a, a big thing to walk away from. I mean, ultimately, the business forces, even, you know, my father brothers have served in different branches of the military. So definitely thank you for your service with that. We're talking with Ashley Drake of the Natural Grip. Now, you mentioned something three, four years in to the business, a million dollars in sales later. I mean, you're, you go back to your husband saying it'll never sell. When you sold your first six figures, what do he say? Uh, he, he said, uh, well, he said, okay, now what? And I said, well, we keep going, you know, I mean, it was just kind of like that. He, um, you know, he was skeptical at first, but you know, when we started the business in May and both of my, the best way is social media, on all of our social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, if you're just interested, kind of want to check us out or start following them. We are very active on DC's Shark Tank and the Profit. Our mission is simple to journey with you on your road to achievement. To do that, I'd like to invite you to partner with us in our Share All Promise, CNBC's. To the next guest here on Home of Big Time, Tony Gauthier of Spritz. You've seen him all over the place, all through the media. Tony, welcome. This Dr. And Hand Freshener. It's a few years ago uh, while I was hosting a party, and uh, I kind of snuck outside for a quick smoke break, and I didn't want to go back inside embarrassing uh, with the embarrassing smell of uh, the <laughs> cigarette smell. I know it's a bad habit as it is, but that's when I went, I, I thought to myself, what if there was a product that can actually take away the smell of smoke from your hands as well as your breath? So that's when I created Spritz, uh, along with a chemist friend of mine. So basically Spritz is for people that, you know, whether they smoke or not, um, it's an uh, uh, alternative, a healthier alternative to freshen your breath. Uh, zero calories, no sugar. It's all natural. Um, it's the new after dinner mint. You can use it after you just ate some sushi, some fried food. You're about to go on a date, go into the office. You know, uh, that's what spritz just is all little, about. Just a little spritz and you'll be ready to go. <laughs> there you go. A little spritz goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, eventually you got this thing pumping enough where you got enough people excited and you ended up raising capital. Now, before you ended up on mm-hmm. ABC's Shark Tank, had you ever pitched and raised capital before? No, I have not, actually. This has actually been my first time um, doing it to this extent. I've started businesses before um, as a young guy, uh, whether it was doing music or doing clothes, a clothing line, a local clothing line, but never something to this extent. So this is still something very brand new to me. I'm still learning. There's a lot to learn. Mm. I'm in no way a professional entrepreneur. I'm an (laughs) entrepreneur in training. Um, But uh, it's, it's been an awesome ride, and I know that we have... Um, I came up with Spritz, a lot of entrepreneurial books. I watched and said, okay, I need to know my business inside and out. So what we would do as a team is we would practice uh, going over every question that we can possibly think of, every question that they would possibly throw at us, and also we would create our own. Um, as well as it allowed me to start learning the industry of the breath industry, the breath spray industry, the mint industry, the gum industry, so I can know what the competition, if so, if, if it exists uh, out there, what they would be, what it would be, or what not. Gotcha. So preparing for the show, I would just always say to myself, you know, I have this credo that I live by, this creed that I live by. My thoughts will transform my future. If I think positive about the results, only positive uh, uh, results are going to come to mm. me. So I would just, you know, be positive every day about going on the show presenting my idea. It wasn't about winning or losing. It wasn't about getting a deal or not getting a deal. It was about knowing my business. The show daily and I just dot com and they can uh, click the link. To- we made it. Regardless of what the outcome is going to be, we made it. Mm-hmm. I made it. I am doing this for my mother. My mother passed away three years ago to a day oh, man, of the sorry, taping man. of the show. Oh, man. And uh, so it's uh, okay. So I knew I had the power of my mother as well as, you know, being an entrepreneur in training. This is what it's all about. I'm standing in front of an opportunity, basically a gold mine or basically a pot of gold, whether they like it or not. The world is going to see this. So hmm. I just had to swallow all my see the episode. So I don't want to give up all the juice. But for that influx of, of new business and new inquiries? Yeah, there was actually, um, you know, really, uh, that moment of orders and the influx of email, it, it was overwhelming. Uh, we purposely had a, we purposely had a delay for the shipment date so that we could be ready just in case there were too many orders or not enough. And, you know, it was such a blessing to see all those orders coming in, but I had to take a step back and, you know, and start asking for favors on how do I properly do this? What is, what is the flow? What should the flow look like? You right. know, when we're sending out orders, we, you know, just recently I sent out an email blast to all of our awesome and amazing customers that, you know, this journey hasn't been perfect, but we thank you for riding it out with us. I mean, mm-hmm. we had some, hic- we had hiccups with our, our shipment station. We had some hiccups with our, with our orders. 
you know, I had to refund some people. I had to send out double duplicates because these are lessons that I just didn't know. I didn't, wow. I had no idea how to properly send out orders wow. through a mail channel when we had all those, uh, when we had all the night of the, the show airing. So, you know, it was just, it, it was definitely that night was a lesson learned and it's, it's been a lesson learned. And, um, you know, mm. that's what life is all about, mm. you know, uh, because that's what it's all about. Everything's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be sweet. And you have to be okay with that. You know, I was emotional and hurt when I would see emails of people saying, hey, I didn't get my order today. Can you give me a refund? Or, hey, oh, you know, that hurts. it took I 10 to days. Money back, right? of, yeah. it, it does. But one of my key values with my company, with Spritz, is customers first. I mean, we believe in amazing customer service. I email everyone back that sends me an email, sends me a Facebook post, a tweet, uh, an Instagram. Anytime something comes into the Spritz Me website, I email them back personally. I don't wow. care if it's a good email, a bad email, if it's an insult, if it's a congratulations, I email everyone back because I believe in the power of customer service. Well, well Tony, Tony Gautier, owner of Spritz, I definitely th thank you for taking your time out. Sounds like you're a very wise man. And uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit more about how to get a hold of you, maybe your website, information, things like that. Yeah, definitely. And again, I want to thank you for having me on the show. I really do appreciate it. This is a part of the journey that I just am so thankful for. All the listeners can uh, check us out on spritzme.com. That's S-P-R-E-T-Z, M as in Mary E. I won't lie. I'm you. Spritz is the future, and we are, we are so happy to be a part of your show. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for taking your time out here on homebabiz.com. Thank you. You have a good one. Connect. Capitalize. Go. Hi, I'm Eugene Rowe, host of the podcast for business. On behalf of our team, I'd like to say thanks. Every month, we're able to impact thousands of lives all over the globe with relevant, impactful, and insightful guests. Some of them have even been featured on national television shows like ABC's Shark Tank and CNBC's The Profit. Our mission is simple, to journey with you on your road to achievement. To do that, I'd like to invite you to partner with us in our share all promise. I promise to continually share for free without commercial interruption and unnecessary subscriptions. And I ask that you promise to share us with your friends. Here's something you like. Simply use the social share buttons at the bottom of the page to tell your network about the podcast for business. It's simple, easy, and only takes five seconds. That's it, partner. You've made the share all promise. Put your mouth where your money is. Radio for small business with Home of Biz. Well, it's radio. A fresh, uh, quicker access. And we have several interstates here that go uh, north, south, east, west. <laughs> you know, I, I actually like Louisville because I could be in downtown and in the next five minutes I'm in Indiana. And I thought that was pretty cool. That is. <laughs> Just that by is. crossing You're the bridge. You're in the country in a hurry. <laughs> awesome. So now we're talking to David Lynch with Seminon Realty in Louisville, Kentucky. Am I pronouncing it right, David? Louisville? That is correct. Awesome. You got it. I could tell you'd talk to someone here before. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been corrected before. You say Louisville in, uh, in Louisville, and you, people look at you from Right. <laughs> That's right. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> so, now, your commercial realty, most of the people that we talk to, they're either residential or, in many cases, they're investors. Tell us about the- yes. North South. Messing with its commercial. Has ever tried to focus, say, for instance, if a building's empty or a commercial real estate property is empty, do you maybe try to help companies who want to move into town, incentivize them to move into your places? Yes, we do. That would be mostly leasing a lot of times. Uh, we do all kinds of leasing for large and small properties. And that's a little bit different game. <laughs> you, know, you play that game with a letter of intent usually to say, it's kind of like, this is what I'd like to do. And then you negotiate that back and forth before you get to the lease. I got so you. that is the leasing side of it. Huh. So tell us about, I know you mentioned how you got started, but what was the mindset that brought you into the commercial industry? And before you say that, we're talking to David Lynch with Seminon Realty, Commercial Realty in Louisville, Kentucky. Tell us a little bit about the mindset that took you into commercial versus where it seems like many other people like to go into homeowners and private property. Well, growing up, I was a runner in high school and college, 
So that required a lot of doing on your own and some on teams. And from that background, I came into real estate. My brother-in-law sells farms in Tennessee and has done that for 30, 40 years. And I thought I'd get into uh, residential, which I started in. And then I kind of expanded into commercial because it was a little more challenging. Hmm. It takes a little more time, a little more effort, a little more knowledge. And you run into a lot of the, the, the big thing that's difference between residential and commercial is zoning. You can only put certain kinds of businesses in certain locations of property based on the zoning. So, you know, you can't just go out and buy any business you want. It has to fit the zoning method or you have to get it rezoned. So you have zoning issues. You have environmental. You know, a lot of times you own homes, you get a home inspection. Well, when you get to commercial, you have a commercial requirement, a lot of times by the lender, which could include uh, environmental inspections. Those uh, take a little bit of time. They're more expensive. And I'm guessing we- most lenders aren't necessarily trying to rush the process. They want to make sure that their investment is going to be protected, right? Exactly right. So what about, you know, I'm guessing there's also things like flood studies and things like that. What are some other, if I'm going to start a business, say even in Louisville, Kentucky, right? And I want to buy a piece of commercial property. What are the top three things I need to consider, even if it's zoning? What are the top three things I should consider before I even sign the contract on my new franchise? Well, before. 